says, how does the World Cup unite and divide the world? Okay. Um, my personal story. Well, how I began to play soccer was at the age of seven, and surprisingly, it wasn't my father who got me to play. It was my mother. Um, my father was always away because he was uh, an alcoholic. So my mother took me and my brother because uh, she wanted us to play. Um, uh, soccer is an important subject to me because um, it taught me discipline, commitment, and persistence. And I met a lot of fr good friends that I still keep to this day. Um, my first experience of the World Cup was in 2006, and it was in Germany. And I saw how big of a deal the World Cup was. And as like as I grew older, I kind of like thought to myself that I learned to my I learned that the World Cup is like much more than just the actual sporting event itself. There's so much more that goes into it. So can anybody raise their hand and tell me what the World Cup is? Well, so it's like it's just like on the teams like the best players from like all over the world and like they kind of like come and represent like where they're from and like the team that they're like so like say like you're from Mexico and you're good you get to go obviously play for Mexico and like I guess like it's like to see like which country has like the best players when they're playing for a cup. Yeah, that's exactly right. Can you go to Mexico? <laughs> It's, yeah. it's kind of like the Olympics, it occurs like every four years, except the Olympics occurs like every eight years, I believe. Four? Oh, it's, well, it's the same. <laughs> and well, I, what makes a difference, it's the biggest single sporting event and competition in the world. And uh, the previous winners of the World Cup was Italy. Well, no, that was in 2006. In 2010 was Spain, and 2014 was uh, Germany. Next slide. And it's much more difficult than you think to get into the World Cup. Uh, the international teams, they, they have to play in competition prior to the actual tournament itself, and they get placed in groups, and uh, they have to face off the two teams with the highest points, uh, make, it in, make it into the tournament right away, and then the teams with the lowest points, they have to battle off to uh, make, get a spot in the tournament. And then once they get their spot in the tournament, they're divided into groups of eight. And yeah, groups of eight with four teams in it each, at selected at random to make sure there's like no issues. And um, yeah, next one. And well, how does the World Cup benefit the host country? This is um, where I was referring to that there's much more that goes into the World Cup than just the sporting itself. In the World Cup, uh, there's an increased touring and real Tourism and retailing in the host country, so millions come to watch the tournament, uh, which means money, more money is being made in the country. Second, uh, it's what's called the feel-good effect, which is when the like the mindset of the citizens that are living in the actual host country it begins to improve because the country is being put on display for the world to see. It's a it's a good thing. And then uh, the third reason is more jobs are created. Um, in the World Cup, 12 stadiums are required to be built. And these stadiums, they need workers. Um, in the World Cup, it was estimated that about 100,000 plus jobs were created in order to get everything done and ready for the tournament. Next slide. And well, there's benefits to the World Cup being held in the country, and there's negative. And well, negative, the negatives and there's negatives in the whole country, and some of it is um, increase in solvencies. And what insolvencies are is that, um, for instance, Brazil, they were, they were the country that hosted the 2014 World Cup, and they had to borrow money for construction, and after the World Cup. They were in debt because they're not able to pay back the, the country they borrowed from. Also, inflation remains high. Like the World Cup, it leaves it in a bad state. Also, like I mentioned before, the World Cup requires 12 stadiums to be built. And they have to meet FIFA standards. And these stadiums have to, um, they're required to $3 billion a year for maintenance. and. After the World Cup, uh, these countries no longer have use for these um, 
stadiums, so they go to waste. And uh, if for instance, in 2014 in the World Cup for Brazil, uh, the stadiums that were used for Brazil after, they either go to small um, semi-professional clubs, which don't bring in any audience, or for instance, uh, and one, um, sorry, uh, one of the stadiums was used for a parking lot, which is just a complete waste, and they're spending all this money on the World Cup, and it's just hurting them, and then uh, I did an interview with uh, an uncle of mine, his name was Juan Valtero, and we had a lot of similar mindset about the World Cup. Um, he told me that in 2014 in Brazil that there was a lot of protests and riots about the World Cup being hosted in that country because um, the people of Brazil were not content with all the money being spent on the World Cup because they spent billions of dollars on the World Cup to be hosted there. But um, the people of Brazil wanted the money to go to more important issues like health care, education, and there was a lot of problems that, that um, it was going on for a while that happened because of that. Also, um, the GDP remains low, gross domestic product, and then the, just the World Cup is like, I've, can I get the next one? I've come to the conclusion that the World Cup's just like, it's not beneficial for the host country, and my solution, well, there's no real solution. I just thought that we should not support something that's hurting other countries, although it is a big entertainment factor, but it's um, hurting the country financially. For example, the World Cup was held in 1994 in the United States, and um, in individual countries, they lost millions of dollars just because of the World Cup itself. And uh, I just think that we, should, we shouldn't support something that's hurting other countries. And I've come to the conclusion that Countries, and especially less developed countries, they shouldn't push to host it because they have to do a bidding process. And right now there's a lot of corruption in FIFA. Um, many officials were fired. And it's just uh, bad for the host countries.